Do you remember making this one, Anthony? The um, slice. No, uh, I helper don't. type. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember it. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. That's all right. It's just uh, it's an implementation of array dot slice. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just the one that comes in JavaScript, you know. Uh, so we have we pass yeah. in the original array, then we have a start position and an end position. It's easier maybe if we look at the if we look at the tests. So the array is always going to be the same for all these tests. It's an array containing one, two, three, four, five. So if we slice from position zero to position one, then we'll just get the first thing. Zero to zero, of course, yeah. is, an, is an empty array, so that's easy enough. And then from two to four, we would get uh, element, like you can think of it zero, one, two, and then three, but four is the, is the end. So I guess two, the first position is inclusive, and this one is exclusive. Uh, we, don't, we don't get the, the fourth element, we just get index three. It's so hard to talk about these things because they're zero indexed. Um, there's a couple other cases for handling negative indexes, which is kind of interesting. Um, handling uh, invalid, like over over the end, uh, different cases. But yeah, uh, let me show you. So I want to show you one. Let's grab it. So the negative, handling the negative cases is, is one of the interesting parts. So here it is. Uh, so yeah. can we, yeah. So this one is by uh, Zhao Yao ninety one. I don't know. Did I say it even close to being <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, you did great. Okay. So looking at the top, so we have slice. We have our start. They both start and end both extend extend number, and we start at zero. And we also we have these uh, default parameters to the length of t because it's a tuple. We can grab a length as a literal value, and then they pass it to this initial n function. So initial n, it says get the initial n items of the array. Fair enough. So here we're going to see we pass in the whole okay. t. And then we have two positive. So let's go look at two positive. Um, so it says if n is negative, convert it to its positive counterpart by the array. So we're seeing if, if n is a negative number. That's what this block means. If it is, we can okay. slice, and that's passing in. So we're kind of actually this is recursive because two positive calls slice. So if it is, we can slice the array. Um, otherwise, we just pa we with p being the positive number. Otherwise, we just pass in. We just return n. Um, so okay. I think hopefully yeah. that that makes that's some sense. Um, and then yeah, we we. We grab the in the we infer the values out. So we have this like initial, we have this initial end set where we're grabbing this the start and inferring out the rest. So I don't know. Uh, does this make any sense? What do you what do you think about this so far? Does this make any sense, the solution? Yeah, I think I think I got what what is he trying to do? And he yeah, it's, I think it makes sense. It's like it, it's using a smart way to avoid doing the the numerical like subtracting. You know, if you have a negative one, basically means that you need to get the length of the array and then uh, sum them up, right? In mm -hmm. order to you know to get the exactly the 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 real the real index. But he's doing the way is that he use the the slice to slice that part. And then to to grab the length of the array in order to do the calculation instead of doing the calculation itself, it's interesting. Yeah, it's very difficult to do number anything with numbers in TypeScript is like yeah a <laughs> hundred times harder than it needs to be. Um, so I think that that is uh, that's definitely always a challenge. Um, I have a few, so we'll go a little faster. I have a few that I want to show. Uh, We've seen him before, you and I, but there's this guy, Team Chong. He makes a lot of the solutions that we show on the um, on the challenges here. Uh, so he has this. It's, were you laughing because it's long? Um, it's got it's yeah. got a lot of stuff going <laughs> on. So we're not going to go through every line of this, but yeah, basically he's finding an index in the array, and he's he's creating a position. He's creating a like a temporary tuple. And then with that start and end position, and then he's inferring out the the different values from 
from those from those elements. And that is like two steps in one. You could do that with nested ternaries. Yeah. And then we're doing slice from start, slice from end. So find it. Find index is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to the reader to go look at how this actually works. This code is going to be up on, it is up on GitHub. Um, but, and then we have, you know, the, I think the helpers here are nice because they make it kind of clear, like remove last is remove, you know, it's doing what it says it's doing. It's removing the last element. Um, yeah. Find positive index. This part is really, really cool. Um, I'm really excited about this code because it it's uh, really clever. It's horrible, but it's also awesome. Um, so what he's saying is one extends, and then there are two things in here, uh, two conditions. So what this means is, is it is one an empty array, or um, or does it have uh, or does the index extend? Or are we done? It, you know, does does it extend the last position? So this yeah. mean, this basically means are we finished? If either of these cases hits, then then we'll get um, like the options for what can be in here are like one, or it can be yeah, zero. If both of them are false, oops. What do I have? Why can't I? My my shift key stopped working. Okay, what? I can't type zero. Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Or zero, or uh, why yeah, can't I zero go back? One. There we go. One or zero, yeah. or a, a, a tuple containing one or zero. So it could be like a, I'm sorry, a, a union of one or zero. And in, in yeah, as long as there's a one there, then it's assignable, and this will this will catch. So this is really clever, really clever code. Yeah. So if <laughs> if and if something or something yeah, exactly. Uh huh. And the same thing is happening here, except it's, uh, you know, it's got a little more stuff in here. So he's saying one extends, and then we have these two things. So this is very, very clever. And I, I love this, yeah. this solution. Um, okay, that's, that's enough on that one. And then the last one I wanted to show, uh, we don't need to talk about it so much either, but I, I thought you would find a, you would get a kick out of it. So there's this guy, uh, he goes by major lift on GitHub. Let's scroll to the top. So this is his GitHub handle, Young Song, and he's been on the show before. We've done some challenges with him. And he has a really oh, cool. interesting way of solving the challenges. I'll scroll down to the very end very fast. The way he solves them, do you see here the implementation for, the, for Slice? Just has result. So his okay. technique and his style for solving these challenges is to do all of the work in the generic parameters, which... Okay, in the generic, yeah. Yeah, he does all. The, so result is a generic. It's we have to go up far in the screen to see, but we have slice, and then it has t start and start position and position and result. And <laughs> it's it's pretty interesting because yeah. it shows the power of what you can do up there in the in the generic constraints. Um, he has these other helper functions that he makes that that you know spread out the work. So he also likes to use a lot of helper functions that do uh, just a particular. Job so like here's a here's a helper that will make sure that we're not out of bounds, um, you know we have less than, repeating, uh, subtracting, popping, shifting, <laughs> absolute like these a bunch of these are prior <laughs> challenges is not negative is negative, uh, yeah. grabbing the sign, um, and then he has a helper for number or string or big int. So this solution I mean it passes the tests and it works and it's pretty robust. But it's very, it's just cool. I just love showing it because it's, it's, uh, it's so fun yeah. to see his solutions and see that, um, you know, we have big, big, uh, you know, challenges where there's a lot of work to be done. And then the actual implementation is just like one thing. <laughs> it's kind of cool. What do you think about it? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I kind of like this I, solution. It's, uh, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, it's it shows a lot of uh, yeah. it shows a lot of promise, and I think it's actually not so terrible to read. You know, we have if you read this part, you know, we check if we're out of bounds. Yeah. If we are out of bounds, we return an empty array. But if we're not out of bounds, then we we grab the first uh, you know end position number of elements, and we shift forward with the yeah. start position. So it's, I mean. It is pretty straightforward in a way. If you understand these pieces and what they do, then it, like it's just composing them together, which is nice. But okay, yeah. well, <laughs> any other thoughts on this one before yeah. we go? No. 
Cool. All right. That's it. He's, he's good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome.